Learning mathematics is very, very difficult to many people, second only to learning how to speak English. Do you have difficulty? Don't be embarrassed. It's a lot of people don't know what they're doing when they get up there and do their mathematics. We're going to introduce you today to Fort Bend Tutoring, honey. Personalized math tutoring is the solution. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Mr. Witt with Fort Bend Tutoring, and today's tutorial is going to be about dividing decimals. So let's start with the first problem here. Anytime you're dividing decimals, you want the divisor, all right, the number on the outside of the long division symbol, to be a whole number, a whole number. You don't want any decimals showing, okay? So in our first problem, we have 13 and 5 tenths divided by 5. Notice that my divisor, 5, is a whole number all right I don't have to have any decimals showing to represent its value so therefore all you're gonna do is you're gonna start by bringing your decimal up here and 5 doesn't go into 1 but it will go into 13 twice 2 times 5 is 10 you'll then change the sign subtract so 13 minus 10 is 3 you'll then bring down that next digit which is 5 you'll have 5 going into 35 7 times so I'll bring a 7 up here and 7 times 5 gives you 35 you'll subtract and you'll end up with zero in this case. Anytime your problem terminates with the value of zero, you have what is called a terminating decimal. Once again, anytime you end up with zero after you subtract it, that is a terminating zero. It is telling you that you can stop now. That's it. That's the end of the problem. So my answer here is two and seven tenths. That's the result. And that's problem number one. All right, so let's move on to our next problem, ladies and gentlemen. We have problem number two. In problem number two, you have 18 divided by 15. 15 is your divisor, and 15 is a whole number. That's right. So I don't have to worry about moving any decimals. However, I can show that underneath the division symbol that I have a decimal here, and I can bring it up just like that. Anytime that you show that your decimal is behind that last digit, you can go ahead and add at least one zero behind the decimal so that you can know what your place values are behind the decimal. Okay, it's up to you. So, 15, it won't be able to go into 1, but it will be able to go into 18 one time without going over. So I have 1 times 15 is 15. I'll then change the sign, which means I'm going to subtract now. 18 minus 15 is 3. I'm going to bring down that next digit, which is 0, and 15 goes into 30 twice that's it so 2 times 15 is 30 and now this will show that this terminates it ends in 0 so my answer here is 1 and 2 tenths that's the answer all right well I uh, hope you're having fun and our next problem may be what you need so let's check it out all right Next, we have six hundredths as a divisor, and we're trying to see how many times it will go into eight and four tenths. So this is the first time that our divisor has a decimal that's showing to the left of our digits here. So what we can do, we'll start out by moving our decimal two places to the right to place it behind that last digit, that last number that's not a zero. Because I had to move my decimal two places to the right and the divisor, I'm going to move the decimal two places to the right underneath the division symbol as well, and then bring that decimal up. All right, so now I'm just working with six here. This is just six. After I move the decimal two places to the right, you're just dealing with six as a divisor. And I know that six goes into eight once. So one times six gives me six. I'll change the sign, subtract. Eight minus six is two. I'll bring down that next digit, which is four, to get 24. And now six will go into 24 four times. Mm -hmm. So four times six is 24. You'll change the sign. You'll subtract. You end up with zero as a result. And you'll bring down that next digit, which is zero and six goes into zero zero times so notice that since I was working on the left side of my decimal here in my answer I had to continue to bring down zeros until the problem terminates so zero times six is just zero so that ends this problem yeah that's it so our answer here is 140 as a result and I'm gonna put my result here in a box a red box there you have it just like that that's problem number three mm hmm I have more to show you so let's take a look at it. All right, in our next example, we have problem number four with one and eight tenths divided by 12. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I don't normally solve division problems horizontally, so I'm going to rewrite this in long division. So I'll show that I have 12 as a divisor going into one and eight tenths, just like that. 
Now, once again, my divisor is a whole number, so I won't have to move my decimals to the right, okay? So I will just go ahead and bring the decimals straight up. I know that 12 goes into 1 zero times, and I know that 12 goes into 18 once. So 1 times 12 gives me 12. I'll then change the sign, subtract, bring on a 6, and I'm going to add another 0 here because my problem hasn't terminated yet. So 12 goes into 60 five times evenly. So 5 times 12 is 60. And then I'll subtract and it terminates. That's right. It ends in 0. Anytime your division process terminates with 0, you can stop. It's over. All right. So here we have it, ladies and gentlemen. And our result is 15 hundredths. That's it. That's the answer to problem number four. And we're so moving on to our next example, which is problem number five. In problem number five, we have 32 hundredths as a divisor and check out our dividend here. It's 7,488 hundred thousandths. Mm-hmm, indeed, right? Intimidating. Maybe not. First of all, remember you have to make this divisor a whole number by getting rid of that decimal. In other words, we'll need to move this decimal one, two places to the right. And since we moved our decimal two places to the right, then I also need to move the decimal one, two places to the right underneath that division symbol within my dividend. Move it two places to the right. And then bring it straight up. Okay? So that decimal is going to be brought straight up between the seven and the four. All right? We're going to see how many times 32 will be able to go into seven. Well, that's zero times, all right? So then, moving on to that next digit here, we'll be looking at 32 going into 74. Well, 32 goes into 74 twice, and two times 32 is 64. I'll then change the sign and subtract. I'll be bringing down a one and a zero, and I'll bring down my next digit, which is eight. 32 will go into 108 three times. So multiplying 3 times 32, I'll end up with 96. I'll then change the sign and subtract. I'll bring down a 2 and a 1. And I'll bring down that last 8 here. And I'll see how many times 32 will go into 128. Well, that's going to be 4 times. So 4 times 32 is 128. So that means that once again, our problem here terminates with 0. So my result is 234 thousands all right so three places to the right of the decimal is the thousands place so be very aware of your place values all right be very aware of that that's problem number five and there's more to show you continuing on here at problem number six we have 213 and 4567 ten thousands divided by a hundred well as I told you before I always work on my problems in long division so if it's set up horizontally or even as a fraction like this I'm gonna go ahead and set up in the long division problem so the denominator here of your fraction is always going to be the divisor so that 100 goes on the outside of your division symbol and within it I'll have 213 and 4567 just like this okay because my divisor is a whole number I don't have to move the decimal so I'm gonna bring my decimal place right up just straight up mm-hmm and check this out a hundred can I go into mm -mm, no but a hundred well can I go into 21 no a hundred goes into 213 twice yeah so two times a hundred is 200 I will then subtract. I have a 3, I have a 1, I'm going to bring down my next digit, which is 4 here. So 100 goes into 134 once. 1 times 100 is 100. We'll change the sign, we'll subtract, I'll bring down a 4 and a 3, and I'll bring down my next digit, which is a 5. And 100 will go into 345 three times, because 3 times 100 is 300. I'll then change the sign, subtract, bring down my 4 and the 5 here, and I'll bring down my next digit, which is a 6. We have 100 going into 456. That's going to be 4 times. Let's show that here. We have 4 times 100. That gives me 400, ladies and gentlemen. We'll change the sign and subtract. I bring down the 5 and the 6, and then finally I'm going to be bringing down this 7 here, and then 100 will go into 567. That's going to be 5 times. That's right, because 5 times 100 will give me 500. Mm -hmm. We'll then bring down the 6 and the 7. 
All right, and it looks like we're gonna have to carry this on to the next page here, so let's do just that. All right, so after we subtracted the 500, we ended up with 67. I'll need to add another zero because the problem hasn't terminated yet. So I'll bring down this next zero here, and I have 100 going into 670. That'll be six times. Six times 100 is 600. We'll subtract, bring down a seven and a zero. I'll need to add another zero here because the problem still hasn't terminated, and now I'll keep adding zeros until it does, right? Or it repeats, and we'll see a problem like that soon, okay? So 100 goes into 700, you guessed it, seven times. Seven times 100 is 700, so finally, after changing the sign and subtracting, this will terminate with a zero. So we know to stop because it's done with a zero now. And so your answer here, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get that together. Our answer is two and 134,567 millionths. That's the result of this problem right here. Now, I will tell you that you could have done the following, ladies and gentlemen. Let's check out our original problem, okay? In our original problem, we had the following. We had that 213 and 4,567 ten thousandths divided by 100, right? All you have to do when dividing by 100 is move the decimal two places to the left. See, if we were to move this original decimal one, two places to the left, and place the decimal between the two and the one, you would have ended up with our answer right here. Yeah, and that will work that way every time you divide by 100. If you're dividing by 100, you just move the decimal two places to the left. If you're dividing by 10, just move the decimal one place to the left. If you're dividing by 1,000, move the decimal three places to the left. That's the way it works, okay? So that's that problem, ladies and gentlemen. And now we're moving on to our next problem, which is problem number seven, okay? Here in problem number seven, we have 97 hundredths divided by 1,000ths. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to set this up as a long division problem just like the rest of them. I have as a divisor one thousandths and underneath the division symbol here the dividend is going to be 97 hundredths. We're going to start by getting rid of the decimal in our divisor. So that means we'll need to move this decimal one, two, three places to the right. If I move the decimal three places to the right in the divisor, you'll need to move the decimal one, two, three places to the right in your dividend and then bring that decimal straight up. All right. So, start dividing. 1 goes into 9, 9 times. 9 times 1 is 9. You'll change the sign. You'll subtract. You'll be bringing down a 7 here. 1 goes into 7. That's right. 7 times. This gives me 7. I'll change the sign and subtract. I'll bring down that next digit, which is 0. And then 1 goes into 0, ladies and gentlemen. 0 times. So, your answer here is 970. That's it. So, just like the last problem, I gave you a little shortcut. Here, your shortcut here is anytime you're dividing by one thousandth, okay, anytime you're dividing by one thousandth, all you have to do is move the decimal three places to the right. And that's it. And that'll give you your result. Let's say you were dividing by one hundredth. You would move the decimal two places to the right. And if you were dividing by one tenth, you would move the decimal one place to the right. Okay, so be aware of working with your powers of 10. That's like 100th or 10,000 numbers like that. You can simply move the decimal to get to your result. All right, but if you forget all of those shortcuts, then simply use your long division and you'll end up with the right answer. Okay, that's what I do. So that's problem number seven, ladies and gentlemen. There you have it. Moving on to our next example, which is problem number eight here. In problem number eight, we have 63 and 47 hundredths divided by a negative one-tenth. Now, remember, I just told you about dividing by one-tenth. All I'll need to do is move that decimal in our dividend, that's 63 and 47 hundredths. I can move it one place to the right to get the result of dividing by one-tenth. But I'm going to show you how it looks in long division anyway. So one thing you should note, ladies and gentlemen, is that anytime you're dividing a positive divided by a negative, your answer will be negative, all right? So if you ever need a refresher on on dividing with integers with the negative and positive values. So if you need a refresher on dividing signs and whatnot or multiplying with signs, then you can go ahead and check out our video on dividing integers. All right, and it goes over those sign changes when dividing. Okay, so here's our problem. We're going to start by showing that we have a divisor of one tenth and we're trying to see how many times they'll go into 63 and 47 hundredths. I know my answer will be negative because a positive divided by a negative 
negative is always a negative. So I'm going to place a little negative sign here so I can know that my result will be negative. Then we need to get rid of that decimal that we have in a divisor. So I'm going to move the decimal one place to the right to make it a whole number. And I'm going to move my decimal one place to the right in the dividend and bring it right up. So it's going to be right smack between the 4 and the 7. From there, I have 1 going into 6 6 times. 6 times 1 is 6. I'll then subtract, bring down my next digit, which is a 3. 1 goes into 3 3 times. Mm -hmm. And 3 times 1 is 3. I'll change the sign and subtract. That brings down a next number of 4. All right, then we'll see how many times 1 will go into 4. That'll be 4 times. 4 times 1 gives us 4. We'll change the sign. We'll subtract that 0 out there and I'll bring down my next digit which is seven one goes into seven seven times yeah evenly and it will terminate ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. it terminates with zero so I know I can stop right here we have our result the answer is negative six hundred thirty four and seven tenths and done ladies and gentlemen reminder Dividing by one-tenth, all you had to do was move that original decimal one place to the right to get your response. Notice how that would have worked out just fine because from the beginning, that 63 and 47 hundredths, the decimal has been moved one place to the right to place it between the four and the seven. So you could have used the shortcut that I told you about. All right, so that was problem number eight, ladies and gentlemen, and that concludes this video from Fort Bend Tutoring and me, Mr. Witt, on dividing decimals. As always, please rate, comment, and subscribe. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you're able, please donate because that helps us bring you more free math videos. Peace. We certainly hope you enjoyed today's presentation by Fort Bend Tutoring. Did you understand the program? Would you like to rate us or give us some feedback or subscribe to us? Leave a nice comment. Don't just leave something ignorant on there. If you didn't understand the lesson, ask the professor to explain it for you. Don't just get mad and write something ignorant on there.